Brian Haven out there in banjo land. Mike Heading here. Today I've got a little mini banjo lesson for you. We're going to be talking about harmonics on the banjo. You just heard me play a little of the classic Scruggs tune, Bugle Call Rag, that uses harmonics. It's a great tune to learn and start getting into harmonics. I'm going to break down how to do harmonics on the banjo, the basic techniques that I use, and then show you a bunch of places where you can use these. And I'm also going to do a little short lesson on using harmonics to properly set your intonation on the banjo, which is really important since on banjo we have a movable bridge. We need our bridge to be in the right spot, otherwise our notes up the neck aren't going to be in tune. So a lot of stuff you can use here, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. All right, here's harmonics on the banjo. Okay, so let's just start with the basic technique to do harmonics. So let's use our ring finger of our left hand, our, our third finger, and we're going to go up to the 12th fret. And the secret with harmonics is that you don't actually push down the note like you would um, when you're fretting a note. See how I'm pushing it down? And so the secret with harmonics is that you want to be right on top of the fret, not right behind the fret like when you're fretting a note. The other thing I'm doing is I'm not pushing down. I'm basically just resting my finger. Here, how if I push down too much, you kind of lose it. And if I'm if I'm not right on top of the fret, you don't hear it. See how I'm too far away from the fret? So move up. You know, like when you're fretting a note, you're right behind the fret. But to do harmonics, you want to be right on top of the fret. And it just takes some practice to figure out how much pressure you need to apply. And every banjo is a little bit different. Um, you can try it with different fingers, but I like using my ring finger. The reason is a lot of times after you do harmonics, you're going to be going back down the neck. So if you use your first finger, for example, it's harder to get back down the neck. Whereas if you use your third finger, I'm, I can get back down easier. So try those harmonics on all the strings there. You can even do it on the fifth string at the 12th fret. Just moving up and down. Don't worry about what you're doing with your right hand at, at this point. So that's the basic technique. Remember, you gotta be right on top of the fret and you're not pushing down. So the other spot you can do it, you can, there's a bunch of spots you can do it on the neck, but you can do it at the seventh fret. That's like a D chord. It's basically your D bar, your D bar chord. That's a nice one. You can also do it at the fifth fret. I would just practice it at a bunch of different spots. Remember, get right on top of the fret. You can also do it up here at the 19th fret, way up there. I've got my uh, classic right there on the, the fretboard there. And with the fifth string, you got to be a little careful because you, you, your fifth string doesn't start down here. It starts at the fifth fret. So the 12th fret on the fifth string works because it's actually the seventh fret. If you count, you got 12 minus 5 is 7. So it also works at the 17th fret, which is really the 12th fret of the 5th string. But here how it doesn't work at the 19th fret like these other ones do. So you got to be a little careful with the 5th string. It only works at certain spots. You can do it there too because that's, that's 5 up from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can do it at, at 5, 7, and 12 of any spots of just depending on where you are. Okay, so let's talk about a couple ways you can use that. One, there's lots of songs that use harmonics. Um, Grandfather's Clock is a great song um, that uses harmonics where you do a kind of a chime. Kind of imitating a clock. Um, another one is Bugle Call Rag that I played at the beginning. That's a great one, um, a great classic Scruggs song that you can use harmonics on. Um, another thing I like to do is, I'll use harmonics, um, let's say there's kind of a breakdown in the song, um, I do this in my band a lot, 
is, you know, if I'm dropping out on the banjo and maybe we want to kind of create a little bit of a sparser sound, you know, not as, as, as filled up with, with notes, using harmonics sometimes in the background can create some really kind of cool, spooky song, especially on like a, you know, maybe a bluesy song in D or something. You know, maybe I do something just like that to create a little background and then I... So it's a cool um, way to kind of break it down, create some kind of chime-like effects. You can also use it as an ending to a song. Um, in G works really good. So maybe I'll do something like... So I did a, a lick. So I go up the tw up to the 12th fret. I did T-I-M there with my right hand. Then I went all the way up to the 17th fret on the fifth string for my last high G. That one takes a little bit of practice, but you could do stuff like that. You could also kind of slow it down too. You know, those harmonics are kind of a showpiece, um, you know, it's it's meant to create a little bit of excitement with the audience, um, so, you know, part of that is kind of the, the effect of it too, so don't be afraid to kind of slow it down, you know, and again, that last note is kind of your, your show, um, your last uh, kind of note of the song, so it's cool to kind of, you know, add something a little different, those chimes at the end really kind of bring out the ending, I think. Um, so that's a great spot, you can use that. Um, what I would do is just get the technique down first and then you can you can use it wherever you want. You know, again, you can do it at C, D, and G. Um, so so try, give that a try. Okay, last thing you can do with harmonics is you can use it to set your intonation. So your intonation is basically the placement of your bridge on the banjo. And if your bridge isn't in the right spot, so on a banjo the bridge is movable. Like a guitar, for example, the bridge is set. Um, you know, you don't move the bridge where violins, banjos, mandolins have a movable bridge. So if your bridge isn't in the right spot, you can be in tune when you're open, but basically when you start putting notes up the, f up the neck, they're going to be out of tune because your bridge isn't in the right spot. So the way you can check that is with harmonics. So you basically do a harmonic at the 12th fret, and then you play the fretted note. And those should be the same. If they're not, then your intonation is, is off. You can do it at the 19th fret too. It's a good way to tune, tune your banjo as well. But basically, if, if, if you can even use a tuner to do it, but if your notes are sharp, if the fretted notes are sharp, that are sharper than the harmonic notes, so higher, you need to move your bridge back toward the tailpiece and just do it very slightly you don't have to uh, a small adjustment will make a difference and vice versa if you're if the notes are flat your bridge is too close to the tailpiece and you want to move it a little bit forward and that just takes practice um, you can loosen the strings a little bit if you need to move the bridge so give that a try if you need to if your intonation isn't quite on or you can have someone set up your banjo that knows what they're doing okay so that gives you some stuff to work on all right good luck